Hi, I'm Mike Cutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will be looking at managing NFC or non-fiber carbohydrate in the rumen and the impact on dairy nutrition. We can begin by asking what are the opportunities if we get NFC correctly? Well, we know the cows will give more milk. We know we have healthier cows if we got it right because we don't have rumen dysfunction. Our milk components, especially milk protein, can increase. We can make more grain available in the feeding program or remove it out of the diet and lower the amount of grain needed if we are getting good digestibility. We can stimulate microbial growth, which is one reason why we'll get more energy and protein from the diet. And we can increase the forage level in the total ration dry matter if our NFC fraction is working harder. Of course, on the downside is what are the problems if we are limiting NFC? We certainly know we have to have higher quality forages. We know it will take higher dry matter intake to maintain good cow health. Uh, we certainly know that kernel processing can be an important part to make that NFC more available. Also, chances are, what are our choices in terms of types of grains we have? And we start looking at such things as high moisture corn, steam flaking, alkali treatment, and other ways to process this grain. Also, if you don't get the NFC right, we will see some evidence of rumen acidosis in the field, also known as SARA, or subacute rumen acidosis. And again, if we don't get it processed right, we can see as much as 10 to 15 or even higher percent starch remaining in the manure. So let's talk a little bit about the types of NFC in this module. The first one will fall in the NFC category is organic acid. These are acids that are resulting from well-fermented corn silage. For example, or any silage, corn silage contain as much as 5 to 7 to 9 percent organic acid. They can therefore, when mixed with other feed ingredients, a high silage diet can contain 2 to 4 percent organic acid. This is part of the NFC fraction. But here's the key take-home point. Those carbohydrates have already been fermented by the bacteria in the silo or have been used. Therefore, when it gets to the rumen, the bacteria are cheated. In other words, they do not have this available to be fermented as a source of energy. Therefore, if you have an NFC ration that's running 38% and 4% of it's coming from organic acid, it feeds like a 34%. Therefore, it could be marginal to deficient. So make sure you adjust for these organic acids. They don't hurt the cow. They serve as a source of energy, but the rumen microbes don't use them as an energy source. A second group would be sugars. Sugars are rapidly fermented in the rumen because they're highly soluble and usually have a lot of surface area. They end up producing higher levels of propionic acid, which can be good because they provide a source of glucose for high-producing cows. Because of their capabilities, we recommend 2 to 4% of the ration dry matter come from sugars. And sources we can look at in the diet would include such things as molasses, both wet and dry, sugar, bakery waste, some types of candy, whey, lactose, and extremely finely processed feed grain starch, which would probably be less than 500 micron, almost talcum powder type consistency. The key point on sugars is that it can jumpstart the rumen fermentation. Or if we have lots of soluble protein, we can match the nitrogen to the carbohydrate source. But if we put too much sugar in or the rumen environment is not optimal, we can lead to acidosis. So there's good and bad news with sugar as well. The major NFC source on dairy cow rations will be starch. The key thing on starch is to realize that the rate and extent of fermentation will vary greatly depending on the source of starch and how it's processed. We probably have to start looking at levels in the total diet coming from all feed sources. A range of 20 to 30 percent is commonly recognized. A lot of us recommend 26 to 27 percent total starch in the ration dry matter. You better check your corn silages because corn silage in Illinois can vary from 14 to 50 percent starch. Here the key point is careful management is needed to optimize performance while avoiding metabolic disorders. Therefore, we'll have to look at the level of starch, the form of it, for example, processed corn silage, steam flake corn, fiber levels, fiber forms to maintain good rumen health, how we feed the cow, component fed, total mixed ration, fat can have a negative effect if it's too high, especially if it's unsaturated fat, which is one of the types. So certainly we have to make sure we manage everything, not just the starch level. This slide from Wisconsin illustrates the differences in rates of starches and grains. On the left side, we can see the real fast starches, such as wheat and barley, the slow ones, corn and sorghum. Then on the right side, the dairy farmer or the feed company will mill that grain. And we can see that the dry material coarsely processed is much slower than the steam flake 
and the high moisture corns. Therefore, this slide says you've got to get a balance to get the right rate and speeds of starch in the diet. The NRC recognized this in 1989. We look at the different energy values for shell corn. For example, we can see cracked corn has a fairly low value of 0.84 mcals per pound of dry matter. However, we go to very finely processed corn, it can be as high as 0.96. So we can see that how we process, process the corn, such as high moisture, steam flaking, moisture treatment, or type of corn can really change the energy value of the feed. Therefore, we need to adjust that in your rations when we look at carbohydrate and NFC fractions. The new NRC addressed this by putting on the processing adjustment factor, or PAF. We talked about that earlier in some of our other modules. And what this simply means is that ground corn has a value of 1 or 100. If we go to bakery waste or high moisture corn, it's 4% more available. Or if we go to crack corn, which is very coarse textured, we drop down 5 percentage units. So by adjusting this number, we can make that carbohydrate work harder or less hard depending on its particle size and process. Another NFC, non-fiber carbohydrate fraction, is pectin. Pectin actually is part of the cell wall, but it's included because it's rapid solubility. Some people call that digestible fiber in the feeding program. It is rapidly fermented in the rumen, and can, but the good news is that it results in a fiber digestion resulting in acetic acid instead of propionic acid. So we can manipulate the VFA production, in some instances indirectly the pH, by going to these types of products. Common products in the dairy cow ration, alfalfa, beet pulp, and citrus pulp, would contain significant levels of pectin in the feeding program. Therefore, we might want to target something in the range of 2 to 4% of the total ration dry matter. Again, the key point here is we can increase carbohydrate availability without the risks of added starch in the feeding program. And many of us know citrus salt and beet pulp are very friendly feeds for the high-producing dairy cow. Finally, let's go to the NRC and show you the tremendous variation in NFC. We won't read all these signs or numbers to you, but look at it. Let's pick on beet pulp and compare it to, say, corn grain. Corn grain is nearly... 80% starch by itself. So it is a high starch containing feed. Look at beet pulp. Only 2% of the beet pulp would actually be starch. However, it can be about a third sugar and extremely high in pectin. Look at your silages. Really wet silages can be as much as 40% of the NFC can be volatile fatty acids. That is spent fuel for the bacteria. So hopefully by looking at this model, we get a better feel of how we mix and match the NFC fractions, and how that will affect the rumen fermentation and indirectly milk production and performance in our high-producing dairy cows. That completes this module and NFC. Thanks and have a good day.